started streaming. What's up, everyone? Happy Friday. Here we are again for another session of, uh, we're going to talk about some guitar today. I got a lot of questions from my Frampton guitar video that I put out the other day, uh, the 100th episode of What Makes a Song Great. Because some people, I mentioned the scale, the hexatonic scale, uh, in reference to a lot of the stuff that Peter was playing, but it's actually not totally accurate. He actually does a hybrid of two different scales, and you find a lot of people that are, you know, great melodic players will do a hybrid of the scale. David Gilmore, Neil Schoen, um, and it's a hybrid of the hexatonic scale and the blues scale. Okay, so it's it's, um, but they don't use it together. It's not played. I'll show you show you what it is here. It's almost like they switch back and forth between the two. I'll give you an example of some of the phrases that Peter uh, will play um, in his solo. So he's, uh, you know, some of the, um, he goes, uh, this first solo that he plays. This is all major pentatonic. There's your hexatonic scale. That. That's just all over D minor too. Let me play a little D minor thing. So he's a. Uh, there's a blues part. So there's blues, right? Perfect phrasing, but this is the hexatonic scale here. You know, some people said it kind of sounds like Jerry Garcia, too, right? Because Jerry Garcia would use the same kind of thing, or John Mayer. So as I said in the video, that the hexatonic scale, this is all in my Beato book. By the way, before I forget... Discount code for today's live stream that goes through the weekend is RB600. It's 60% off my Beato book bundle, which is a 700-page PDF, or my ear training course that'll teach you how to hear these things, right? So when you hear it, you know, oh, I know what that is. That's a hexatonic scale, or that's a blue scale. Billy, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Are they saying that it looks good because I'm using the good camera? Well, Aaron says it sounds and looks amazing. There we go. Okay, so... um. So some of Peter's phrases, you can hear that scale right there, right? Mm -hmm. that. So let me tell you what it is again, for those of you that didn't watch the video. So it's one, two, flat three, four, five, flat seven. That's the hexatonic scale, right? So it's basically a pentatonic scale with an added second or ninth in it, right? Uh, but he is playing both that and a blues scale. So that's where your hybrid scale uh, comes in. So he, uh, some of his phrases he, he does. Um, so this part, um, he actually uses Dory in there. But right here. I love that part. So you've got the D minor blues scale, right? But he adds that ninth in there. That ninth gives it a lot more momentum, and I think it gives it more melodic uh, variation. So... Right, so that hexatonic scale and the blue scale, it's being used here, both together. Now, if we combine it into one scale, we have one, two, flat three, four, sharp four, five, flat seven. It's very, very melodic to me. Uh, that ninth in there, the blues thing, but but if you kind of go back and forth between the two, I think it's more effective. Now, 
there's two different types of hexatonic scales. Hexaton hex just means six, right? Six-sided, think of it that way. Pentatonic five, hexatonic six-note scale. There's a hexatonic minor and hexatonic major, but they're both the same notes, okay? So E minor and G major are relative minor and major, right? E minor is the relative minor of G major. So if I go to G and I play the same notes, right? So if I go like the, down here. Um, if I continue down to E, then it's the e, same notes, but it's basically the E minor hexatonic and G major hexatonic are the same notes. G starts on G, though. So it's a G major scale without the fourth. So let's say I play a G major chord. This is what's really cool about it. That blues note from the E minor, right? If I go... The blues note from E minor, right? Don't be confused, because I said I used D e minor with Frampton. Now we're up to E minor, but... Uh, that same blues note is really... It's the flat third, right? So, so it's your G, it would be like your G major blues scale, right? That you know, okay? So if you think of a G major blues scale, you got one, two, flat three, three, five, six. that kind of almond almond brother song okay so that g major hexatonic and e minor hexatonic scale have the exact same notes on they're really modes of each other okay so if i'm playing over e minor i start here on g major So those are the only notes I'm playing, and then I can add. So um, those two scales combined, um, they they equal the same notes. When I say they equal the same notes, they have the same notes in them. E, F sharp, G, E, F sharp, G, A, B, um, E, F sharp, G, A, B, um, D, E, or D. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, um, a lot of people were confused when I said that. They're like, hexatonic, what is that? That's actually a very common scale that jazz players use. So my old guitar teacher, Steve, used to say to me, oh, practice your major scales without the fourth. And I was like, why? Because I, I was like, the fourth is cool. Let's say you got a, just a G major uh, scale, right? A G major chord. <laughs> That fourth sounds great on that. Right? Gives that tension. I was like, that's a, that's a great note. What do you... And I think it wasn't necessarily meant for me personally, and I don't mean that boasting-wise, but he knew that 
when I used that fourth that my ear told me, well, that fourth needs to resolve down to the third because I listened to the Allman Brothers and Eric Clapton and Dickie Bet, you know, and I and Marshall Tucker and stuff. And I knew I could hear those kind of things. Frampton used that. Tom Schultz used that. Jimmy Page used that. Eric Clapton used it. Everybody used that. Hendrix used it. Uh, so that that was a common thing that you heard in rock. But what he, a lot of players though that I went to school with would play a G major seven chord, and they'd be, and they would just play these notes randomly that were in the G major scale, and they'd be sitting on the C that fourth and not even realizing it. They just they were just playing patterns, and noodling essentially and hitting those notes by accident. So his thing was that if you practice your scales minus that note, the G major scale minus the fourth, you wouldn't get into trouble by playing that note by accident. So that any of the notes you played were safe notes, okay? So um, so the thing that jazz players start to do, started to do, and I, and I always, I talked about this on videos a couple years ago, they call them avoid notes. I always hated that term in teaching. There are no avoid notes. You play notes that sound good, right? You, and you teach people how to use particular notes, how to hear where those resolutions are, right? So once again, I play this. That. C all over the place on a G chord, but every time my ear sh tells me how to resolve it, okay? But this hexatonic scale is very useful for rock playing and melodic playing. It's really useful. For, it's very useful for jazz playing too, uh, because it teaches you how to play um, uh, over chords where you can kind of noodle around if your ear isn't developed enough and you won't play any bad notes. So you can go to jam with somebody in their jam. Let's jam an E minor. And then you just kind of stick to it. And you're, you're always avoiding that C or C sharp. Either one of those notes could be used in the scale. One would be a Dorian if it has C sharp. One would be, be a, would be Aeolian, right? But those notes, if you don't know how to use them, they can really, you can get into trouble with them, right? Um, so another cool thing that you can do is you can use the scale, let's say I'm playing over an A minor chord, right? So I'm gonna play A minor, I like to play A minor 11. And I can use that. The combination of the hexatonic and the blues. I can also go up to E and play an E. Oh, it sounds great. Those notes, the E minor hexatonic. That sounds good to me. But this note, that note's the flat nine, but it sounds great, right? note that's really dissonant that B flat's really dissonant but when you use it as a blues note it's it works really well I think it's very very melodic it, and it goes by if you use it in passing um, it, it has I mean to me has a really emotional effect 
I had a, 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 a one of my quick lessons on Instagram. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's at Rick Beata one. You should definitely follow me there. But I did one, um, I don't know, a couple of months back and I used that flat nine. A couple of people asked me about it. I was like, wow, that sound, that flat nine sounds really good in there. And um, I'm trying to think what I played on it. Um, uh, oh, I know it was. It was one I was talking about enclosures and I was playing over this and I did. it like that and that sounds but I'm going I'm using that note really ugly note right but when you use it in passing it sounds so it sounds so natural to me it's it's uh, very melodic so uh, that is the hexatonic scale or hexatonic blues scale which is really not it's a seven note scale but it's a hybrid between that hexatonic scale and the blues scale, right? So it's, um, so it has the flat five and it has the natural two, right? So um, uh, you can use it on the tonic. If you're playing over an A minor chord, you can use the A minor hexatonic blues or you can use the E minor hexatonic blues. So it's up a fifth. So you can use it on the fifth of the chord and that gives you that flat nine. But to me, it has a more, it has a really colorful sound because it has the 13 in there. Uh, once again, listen to that one. So, A minor, E minor, um, that's, I think that's a really uh, that's something I learned a long time ago. So I learned that from that P those Peter Frampton solos on Frampton Comes Alive. I learned that when I was a kid. I learned that scale. And when I would jam over Allman Brothers tunes and jam over any Southern rock tunes, if I was playing Leonard Skinner, whatever, I would use that scale all the time. I'd add, and people's like, what is, what, what is that that you're playing? And, you know, I'd be using the, a lot of the blues scale or pentatonic scale, but I'd throw that ninth in there and and other players would say, wow, that's cool. I like how you're using that note in there. Wow, that's a good note, that ninth. And I just like, well, I heard it on Frampton Comes Alive. So, um, and then when I got to college, that was a really legit scale. Even though my teacher, Steve, didn't call it the hexatonic scale, he would be like, oh, that's just E minor without the sixth or G major without the fourth. And... A lot of students got confused. I knew what he was talking about. I was like, oh, that's like the Frampton thing, right? And he, I don't think Steve listened to Frampton, but had he listened to him, uh, he would have heard that. And he was like, yeah, he's doing the same thing, right? So anyways, um, uh, disc. so all this stuff is in my Beato book. Uh, the uh, And if you want to learn to hear where the ninths are, where the sixths are, where the flat six are, you can get... Check out my ear training course. Discount code for today's live stream is RB600. It's 60% off my 700 page PDF, the auto book, Instagram, transcription bundle, and 40% uh, and off the ear training course. Aaron, I saw a couple um, super chats in there. I saw one super chat in there. Was, that, was there a question on that? There were two. Okay. Um, from Alexander Serjukov. Yeah. Um, he sent like fourteen dollars, saying, "Hey, Rick, love your channel. Keep up the great work." Thank you. And then we got ten dollars from Ken Royal. Hey, Ken. And he has a message. Awesome. I love it. Well, if you guys have a question, you can answer it. But if anybody has has any particular questions, um, I I one of the things from the Frampton thing this week was um was that I got a lot of emails about that about this particular scale. What is hexatonic? Because I I don't. I don't know if I've talked about hexatonic scales very much, have I, Billy, on here? Not really, no. No. Which is weird, because I've talked about just about everything. Uh, you know, I'll talk about pentatonic scales with an added ninth, but the but the way that Frampton uses the two together, and uh, he he does a couple more things in there where he plays over the, uh, like the D chord and the N solo. 
uses that that uh, flat seven root four uh, three four five. So you got one two three four five. That's like a pentatonic scale there, but it's one three four five flat seven. Right, that's another thing that to me is a really, really great sound on a, as a pentatonic scale. So that is a pentatonic scale, right? But it's a one, three, four, five, flat seven pentatonic scale. So if you think about, um, it's not a major pentatonic scale. A major pentatonic scale would be one, two, three, five, six, right? Which is totally cool to use too. But this has a. I just love the sound of that. I, that that is a another revelation that I had when I was, um, you know, when I was 15 years old figuring this stuff out. There's a couple songs. It's not just in the. It, he does that mainly in the uh, talk box solo that I played during. Do you feel like we do? He also does it in a, a the song called uh, "I'll Give You Money." He does it all over the place, and that's a great solo. You want to learn a great guitar solo that you'll learn stuff from, check out that solo. He uses that same scale, that same uh, uh, dominant pentatonic. I'm not sure even what to call it. One, three, four, five, flat, seven. You know, if you think about the blues scale, right? One, flat, three, four, five, flat, seven, or the minor pentatonic. You say, well, that would be major pentatonic. Well, it's not, because major pentatonic is one, two, three, five, flat six. It's just a great sound there. And that's another great example of how to use the fourth of the scale, right? That That's... Uh, you can do the same thing and use it on a major seventh chord, right? So if I did... weird sound. You got the four and the major seven. Love that sound though. The... It almost has like a, I don't know if it's like a Middle Eastern sound or something to it, but it's... Um, yeah, that's, so that would be another type of a pentatonic scale, but that's a pentatonic with a major seven in it. That scale would be cool, uh, if I played it, let's say that's those same notes, I could use it over E minor. It would sound cool. Check this out. Same, same notes of that D, uh, pentatonic with the major seven. To me, that's a really beautiful sound too. Um, you got to experiment with these things. That's that's kind of the thing that I did as a kid. I mean, I have a video coming out talking about how I the, like the first scales that I learned, and and they were the things that really propelled me to to right here today. Um, I have a really interesting story about it. I'm going to make a video of that where I'll, that where I'll play guitar. I won't just talk. I promise. Um, and, uh, which was, which the revelation of being able to improvise over songs was, was the most important thing that ever happened musically in my life. That's it. Just improvising. I was like, I want to do that. I want to improvise because spontaneous being creative spontaneously like that to me was the ultimate thing. What can you do? 
where can you, what kind of solos can you play? I just loved guitar solos, you know? I played the bass in the school band and everything. I was a bass major in college, classical bass. I played the piano. I did all these things and everything. But playing lead guitar in a rock band, there's there was nothing that was like that. That was a unique thing. And being able to improvise as opposed to playing worked out solos was a freedom that nowadays it's it's been relegated mostly to blues players, which is really odd to me. Uh, as far as in rock, um, people don't improvise that much. Yet the our the heritage of of uh, of improvisers historically in rock music, from Hendrix to Page to Terry Kath to uh, you know, I mean, some people worked out their solos. They did, and that that's always been part of rock, definitely. But those are part players, really, or they might have jammed and then comped solos from that. So, anyways, I think it's great. If you can improvise, if you can improvise, every show is different. And that was the thing about Frampton. He never played those solos again. He didn't come in. Those solos haven't been played. The ones on Frampton Comes Alive, probably. I looked on, on YouTube. I couldn't find anybody playing the talk box solo or anything. And uh, and the same thing with Bob Mayo's keyboard solo until Les played. They probably haven't been played since those guys played them. I mean, some people would have figured them out. I never figured out the talk box solos. I knew the other solos in there, but... I didn't figure it out till the morning I shot that that video. I came down in the morning and I was like, okay, I gotta learn that whole talk box solo. And it was hard to remember, even though I've heard the song a million times. If you saw me looking over this way, I was looking at Pro Tools to see when some of the, there was so much space in the solo. I was looking over to see where the solos were coming in. I was like, okay, is this the bend? Oh yeah, it's coming in here. So when you, if you see me, if you watch the video, the Frampton video, uh, what makes the sun great episode 100 you'll see me play and then you'll see me look over this way you'll what i'm doing is i'm looking where the next entrance is so i was cueing it visually so i wouldn't screw up uh, but the the pressure of having the camera on is obviously a uh that's a good thing because you don't want to you don't want to i don't want to sit here with billy and and do a million takes uh so any other uh questions billy top chat yeah, yeah. Okay. A couple. Yeah. Um, Jason Hassan gave $20. Jason, thank you. Jackson Knight gave $2 and said, the notes that sound wrong are great notes to Ben. That's right, yeah. Ryan Twig donated $15 said, Rick, the hexatonic riff that Frampton plays that has that sick, quick run at the end. Yeah. The one you said was a revelation when you learned it. Can you demonstrate it? I want to do the fingering right. Um, I th it was that, was it the, the this. Uh, I think that's the lick. Alrighty. By the way, you can slow YouTube down. Use the wheel, okay, that, that's on there, and you can go half speed on YouTube. So if you ever have trouble figuring out anything, anything off my videos or anybody's videos, you can bring it down to uh, uh, 0 0.75 and 0.5. And it plays it at pitch, but you can watch the video in slow motion, and it's way easier to learn things like that. That's a uh, that's been in YouTube forever, and I I know that a lot of people don't even realize that that you can slow stuff down. You can speed videos up in YouTube too. If you're listening to something, if I'm telling a story, and you're like, well, this is kind of interesting, but maybe it's a little boring, and you want to uh, put it in, you know, people do this with podcasts all the time. That's real. That's one of the reasons it's in there to listen to them faster. And you can get through them quicker. So, FYI. And then um, our last one right now is Kathy Bruce. Yep. Donated uh, twenty dollars. Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate that. Um, so, like I said, all this stuff is in my book, in the Beato book. You can you use my ear training course to hear these kind of things. Know when you're playing a hexatonic scale, or know when you're playing a flat six over a minor chord, or the sus four over G over a major chord. You know, you should be able to hear these things too. Um, follow me on Instagram at Rick Beata one. I do these quick lessons on there where I talk about uh, concepts and I actually have a guitar course coming out that I've been working on for a while. Hopefully it'll be out in a month or so, but a uh, couple months, I don't know when just been working on it over time, but it's, it's based on this, uh, on these lessons, particularly on improvising and the concepts behind that. Um, so, uh, if you have any questions, like I said, put them in the comments section here. Subscribe, like, 
everything. Discount code for today's live stream is RB600. It's 60% off uh, my Beato book, YouTube, Instagram, transcription bundle, uh, 700 page PDF, or the um, the Beato ear training is 40% off. Billy, yes? Um, we are last one, uh, Sifu. Last Alan. question. Yeah. Oh, we got two. Sifu, two. Alan Menke. Yep. is about $4, I believe. Awesome. So great stuff. And then David just donated $21. Could you give an example of using the flat five in a simple progression? Thanks. The flat five? What? Yes, as, a, as a chord or as a scale? Um, he doesn't specify. Well, the flat five would be if you have, um, you know, if I'm playing over D minor, let's say. The flat five. That's the flat five. That's that blue. That's the blue note, right? Of course, you can use a uh, use a flat five like that also if you're playing a blues, or you can use flat five. You can use use it like that too. Yes. Uh, so that's it for today. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for all the super chats and. Um, Leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I know a lot of people will come back to my channel as Rick put out anything and they never actually subscribe, but it actually is helpful if you subscribe because YouTube will push my videos out. Uh, I know I do a lot of videos on different topics and everything, and some of you are interested in only certain things. I'm tr I've been trying to vary it more this year. I don't know if you guys have noticed it. 2021 is a year for doing a greater... Um, kind of combining all the years that I've been on my channel and doing more videos about different topics. So uh, thank you guys so much. This has been really fun today. We'll see you later.